Have you ever needed to make a stopped groove or dado or anything in a workpiece? This particular cabinet needs one for what's considered a TV panel. Now, what I do is I take a look at this and I think, all right, I don't want the dado or the groove to show above the shelf. So I want it to stop right at the shelf. Otherwise, it's going to show up there. So I need to do a stopped groove. Now, in order to do a stopped groove, you have to do a couple of things. One thing is you have to know where you need to stop it. This is critical. So the first thing is you want to make your dado. That's going to define the length of your groove. Once you have that dado made, now we know from the bottom to the top, that's our stopping point. It's critical that we put a mark that tells us where to stop. Because obviously when you're talking about looking at it from the underside, we won't be able to see it. So put the mark on top. Now what I want to do is carefully take a piece of wood that's square and go up to the blade. Just rotate this just a little bit until you don't hear the blade touching the workpiece. Make a mark. Now I hold it back a little bit. It's not right up to the edge. And here I do the same thing for the back side. I'm going to go ahead and put that mark and put the line so it's a little bit higher than you might think. Now, what do you want to do? You got to set the fence. For this case, it's eight inches from the front to the start of the groove. So from the face of the table saw to the blade is eight inches. I can set my fence and I'm going to go ahead and make the cut. Now, also note that because a right and the left are mirror images of each other, we need to make sure we have these correctly labeled. So I have the back labeled. I know that's my stopping point and that's the groove. I carefully label everything. And again, I don't want to go past that point. Now, how do we cut this? You put it down over the spinning saw blade, carefully set it down. You do not want to go past that mark. That would have been too far. What I want to do instead is I want to plunge down about an inch or so away from that line. And then I want to back up very carefully. Once I hit that line, then I want to push it forward. Again, this is with the spinning blade on cutting the groove. Now be careful when you exit out because when you do, you're going to expose that blade and there is nothing to protect us from that. So turn the saw on, drop down very carefully. You notice I'm about three quarters of an inch away from that line. Now I'm going to back it up after the workpiece has gotten all the way down. Once I hit that line, I'm going to carefully push it forward. And again, keep constant contact with the fence and as you push this through, make sure you understand where that saw blade's coming through. The throat plate inserts a good hint as to where it's going to be. And now you can see we did not cut into the dado. Now for the other side, what we want to do is, like you would normally, just push it through slowly and then stop where we hit the dado and then raise the workpiece up. And of course I need to make my mark there. And now let's go ahead and make this cut. So turn the saw on, go in, and again, take your time. There's no race. You can go at whatever speed you want to go at. When you get to the stopping point again, now this time we're going to go to that front line. That's the starting point of the saw blade. And now you can turn the saw off and wait for the blade to stop. Or you can go straight up without any damage to the workpiece. Even though the saw blade's still spinning. That's it. Now, 
let's take a look at this very carefully. You notice how I didn't cut into that part, which is critical. We don't want to have a cut into there. But you'll also note that there's a little ramp, and that's because of the shape of the saw blade, right? It's round, so that ramp needs to be removed. The best way to remove this is to use a chisel. Now I just mark it out just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and take a chisel and remove all this part here. This is a three quarter inch wide dado, but I'm not going to use a three quarter inch wide chisel. That wouldn't be right. I'm going to do damage to the sidewalls. Instead I use a half inch wide. It's also nice to have a sharp chisel. And being that this particular material is fairly easy to cut, that makes it easy. Uh, plywood, same type of thing, it's pretty easy to cut. With a sharp chisel, pretty much anything's easy to cut. All right, the next thing I want to teach you is about the terminology, so let's do that. All right, this is a great opportunity to go over a couple of fundamentals. The terminology of using a stack data set can get a little bit complicated, especially if you watch videos on the internet. Let me go ahead and try to describe the different types of joinery with the data set. Let me start with the top. The top here is a dado because it's going from side to side. However, because it's attached to the top and it's actually touching the edge, now it becomes a rabbit. So this part here is for the top piece of the cabinet. That is called a rabbit. The back edge for the back panel, this is considered a groove. The groove, however, when it's touching the edge of the workpiece, again, makes it a rabbit. When you go from the interior part of a cabinet and you're going side to side, like this one is here, this is a dado. Now, if you can imagine there's grain on your workpiece and it's going vertical like this, from side to side, that's considered a dado. Normally, it's considered the direction of the grain. Here, from bottom to top, in the interior, this is considered a groove. One of the more challenging things is how to make a rabbit. I do it on the table saw, and let me show you how. You're gonna to need to put on a sacrificial fence like I have here. As you can see, I have cut into this piece of wood. Had this been the normal rip fence on my table saw, that would do damage. Of course, that's not gonna be very good. Now, this is an add-on fence that I bought. And if you are in the market for one of these, I would encourage you to either buy one or make one. I'm a fan of making a lot of things, but this particular thing might be actually nice to buy. Now, if you can see the height, it's about four and three quarters tall. And the blue T-slot there I added. And that's really nice if you want to put down hold downs. It makes it very easy to do. It's about two and three quarters to the bottom. Now you can see how it's clamped. There's a couple holes there, just tightens down, super simple, and it's, it doesn't get much easier than this. This is one inch thick, and what's nice about this is I know it's perfectly flat, and let me measure the length for you so you can see how long this is. It's longer than the rip fence. So it's just over 44 inches long, and What's nice about that one inch thickness is that all I have to do is add one inch to my dimensions, whether on the Wixie or the scale. I put a little mark right there so I know where to put this when I tighten it on the fence. It's helpful because I don't want to make this slot any bigger. I just want the blade to be centered in there. As you can see that little mark right there. And I put a little hole there just to mount it. 
makes it easy. Let me know if you want to know more about this and um, give me your uh, you know input on this. I appreciate it so much. Again, thanks for watching.